Hello again, this is Tim Corey, and in this video, I'm going to go over some common controls in WPF. For this demo, I'll be using Visual Studio 2017, which you can get for free at visualstudio.com. As a starting point, I'm going to be using a simple WPF project I created in my Intro to WPF video. If you missed that video, you might want to go check it out. I'm going to assume that you've watched it, so I can skip over some of the things we covered in that video. All right, so let's jump right in. Here we have the project open that I create in my intro to WPF video. And it's pretty straightforward. We got our grid here with our column definitions and row definitions. And then we have two text blocks, a text box, and a button. And you won't really cover those controls since I covered them pretty thoroughly in the previous video. But that's where we're going to start. Now let's add on to this because typically you have more than just text boxes. That's probably our, our bread and butter control for entering information, but there are other controls as well. So let's look at a little more complicated one, the combo box. Now combo box and list box are pretty much the same thing. So I'll just cover combo box, but this really applies to both. So if I were to say combo box and give it a name, so x colon name, and we'll call this combo box something like my combo box, and let's put it in the grid dot column of one, and the grid dot row of four, which is right below the the run me button. And that's one of those things to to think about when you're designing your form is that you have to give each of these a, a row number. And so now that I have a combo box, if I want to put that before the Rummy button, I have to actually change this to a three, change this to a four, and kind of swap them around that way. And I can do that. It's just a little ugly if you have multiple things on that line. So now let's call this good and close it out. Now what are we going to put in this combo box? And let's actually make that a... Um, a call span of two. So grid dot column span of two. Now what does column span do? Remember column span says that I want this control to live in two columns. That's the two instead of just the one. And that two incorporates the first column you specify plus the next one. So it's not the current one plus two more. Two includes the current one. All right, so now I want this combo box to have a list in it. Now, in my code behind for my main window.xaml.cs, I've actually already created a public class person. Now, don't do this here. This is just for demo purposes. You should really have a class somewhere else. But for demo purposes, just to keep it close, I actually declared it right in line with my main window class. So it's a really simple first and last name properties is all there is. And then in my main window class, which is actually the code behind for this form, I said outside of everything else, so outside of the methods, I said let's declare a list of person called people. And then inside the constructor right here, after the initialized components, I said let's add three people to that people list. And that's all I've done. So that's, that's this code is actually from the previous lesson. So this, this is all I've done is add three people to a list of people and actually declare that class. So let's assign this list to that combo box. And we called it my combo box dot item source equals people. Pretty simple. But now over here, if we were actually to, were to run this, let's do that. We get WPF demo dot person, and that's not what we want. But if you're familiar with win forms, when we do this, we get the same kind of thing. If we don't specify the the binding source, the the um, display member and value member. So how do we do the same thing in WPF? Well, it's a little bit different. And in fact, it's a little bit more, in some ways, more complex, but in other ways, more feature rich. 
what we do is inside the combo box between the open and closing tags, we say combo box dot item template. So this is a template for displaying a specific item or a singular item. We say it's a data template. And inside here, we can specify anything you want. In this case, let's start off with a simple one. Text block, you're familiar with this. Text equals, we're gonna do curly brace, binding, and then the property name. Now I'll explain this in a minute. But what this does is it says, okay, we need to, for every individual item, this is a template we're gonna use. This is a data template and inside here, we say, I want a text block to say this value. But instead of an actual value, we say binding, bind to this property. In this case, first name, the property path. So first name right here is one of our properties. So now if we run this, Tim, Joe, and Sue. All right, so you've bound to that value. So that allows us to hook up one of our properties and display it in this combo box. Now, what if you wanted the, the full name? Well, the way we used to, used to do it in WinForms still works in DPF in that we come down here and create a, a full property or part of a full read-only property. So it's something like public string full name get and we'd say return dollar sign double quotes curly brace first name space curly braces last name like so semicolon at the end and then here instead of first name we'd say full name If we run that, we now get Tim, Corey, Joe Smith, and Sue Storm. Great. So our combo box now has full names in it. And we have control over what data goes in there. Now I'm going to leave this here because we're going to come back to this after I show you a different control because this is the most simplistic thing we can do with a combo box. We can actually be a lot more uh, full features and how we do things, including adding things like images here if we wanted to, or sets of data. So we'll look at that in a minute, but for now we'll leave this as is. And again, if you want to move these around, if you want to say this goes in row four, and this goes in row three. Now, I'm not sure if you caught that or not, but one can override the other, meaning they can both live in the same spot, which is ugly, but it, it kind of works. Also notice that we've got a, a spacing issue now, which we can deal with by adding a margin. And let's do that here. So I'm gonna put this on the next line and say margin, let's just say 10 for now and put 10 all around it. And now if we start this and look at it, we now have our combo box, the rummy button, the first name field, and we're all set. So the only thing I'd do here is I'd actually, I'd cut this out and come up here and I'd paste it back in, in the right order. Otherwise it gets confusing as to, okay, this down here is actually this up here and this up here is this down here, and it's just, it's a little confusing visually for me. It's up to you if you want to do it or not, but that's thats what I do. All right, so now I'm gonna show you some, I guess more interesting controls is when we could say it. Let's look at the image control. So let's say grid.row is one, 
grid.column is four. We're going to put this to the right of the, um, the information right here. And let's say grid.row span, not row, row span. Let's say the row span is six. All right, so what it's going to do is it says we are in row number one right up here, but column number four, this is one, two, and three here. So column four, and we're going to span six rows, so all the way down here. Now the actual image, we have to give it a source. This is where your, your image is located. In this case, I'll give it a hard code spot. You can give relative paths that you want it to, but I'll give a hard code path, and then it's a self-closing slash at the end. And there we go. Now you've got my image on this form. Now here's a real fun thing. I have not given it a size for my picture. This image is actually quite a bit larger than this. So if I were to expand this, as the form gets bigger, so is my image, which may be a little scary for you, but sorry. So this is one of the features of WPF, the idea that we don't have to specify this is how big the image is going to be. It can adjust based upon the real estate you give it. Notice that that image can get really small. Or if I make it really big, expands all the way, it makes it very, very big, and my form is still over here. So that's an image, really simple to do. Like I said, it's just image. And the only thing to do is give it a source. You can give it a height and a width if you wanted to, or you can give it a max height and a max width, meaning resize all you want smaller, but you can't get bigger than this. And we'll see that in a little bit. So that's the image. I'm going to comment this out actually. I'm actually going to add instead a media element. Now a media element, and let's give it the same parameters as my image. So grid.row is one, grid.column is four, grid.row span is six. And again, it's a source, but this allows me to play video. So again, it's a self-closing tag. And there's a video I have in my hard drive. Now, if I were to run this, it takes a little bit because I'm recording, but there you go, you have a video, which again, resizes based upon the window size. So you can make it as large as you want. We can even maximize it. We can shrink it down. And that, by the way, is my son mowing for the first time, or actually just riding the tractor. So, but based upon this, the video can get bigger or smaller, and yet it still runs the background. Now it's done now, and I haven't looped it. But that's, again, the power of DPF to not only have a running video, but a running video that can be resized dynamically based upon the size of your form. So again, let's comment that out, but that's media element. It's not video, which I wish it'd be called video, but it's called media element. Let's put that in Tim's wish list on, what was it now, number four? I'd love to see that be called video since we have image, but whatever. All right, so now there's sometimes that you want to have multiple things kind of grouped together. Now, I mentioned it in the last video, but you might not have caught it. Certain things can only have one thing inside them. But there are other items that can have multiple items inside them. For example, the grid control is one of those things. It can have multiple things inside of it. But let's look at stack panel. 
Now a stack panel, what it does is it stacks items. So if you put four items in it, it's going to stack them on top of each other or side by side, depending on the orientation. So the key word here is orientation. And you have two choices, horizontal or vertical. So let's start off with horizontal. And the other thing I need to do is I need to put it in that same spot as before. So I'm going to put it in row number one, column number four, and row span six. So that's going to stack over here. And let's give it four images. I'm going to give these images max heights for now. And a max width as well. Oops, not max height. I want max width. And my source is going to be, again, hard code. All right, so there's my first image right there. And I will copy this a few more times. And just for variety, I'll add different images. And so now, if you notice, there's actually a little bit of a picture showing up here. If we start this, it looks like there's one picture, but if we actually open this up, there's multiple pictures in a row. Okay, so this is a stack panel. Notice that they didn't have to be the same size. In fact, this one's oriented differently. It's oriented in the portrait instead of the landscape, which it says no problem. I'll just put them side by side with no margin. I mean, this is, there's no margin there. But when I shrink it down, it just clips them off, clips off whatever's left, which isn't ideal, but there is a solution for that. But first I want to show you if we change this orientation to vertical, Now you run this, you see that again, it's clipped off at the bottom now and they are oriented in a vertical mode. So that's nice, but it might not serve all your needs. What it's nice for is if you want to keep a form together, but have it be dynamic. So you could say, um, you can actually nest these stack panels. So have a vertical stack panel and then inside of it, have a horizontal stack panel that has the text block and a text box. So first name and then text box. Then the next stack panel to have last name and text box, so on and so forth. And so you have this, this form that kind of resides a little bit, but it still kind of keeps together. But in our image case, it doesn't really utilize a space well. We can actually change this though to a wrap panel. So that was stack panel. Now let's look at wrap panel. And if we start this, notice now that I have four pictures side by side, but in a more of a cube fashion. Nothing happens if I resize this way, but if I resize down, notice it actually moves this picture down below. So what's happened is it says, I don't want to clip off any of the images if I can help it. And so what I'll do is I will use all the vertical space I can, but if I can't put another picture below, I'll put it next to me. So in this case, it has two pictures, but then this third picture is, it's that uh, portrait mode and that really can't be put down below. And it also can't have one below it because it would also clip. Therefore, we actually have three columns. Give it a little more space. And now I have two columns. And there we go. So that is a wrap panel. And we can switch the orientation again from vertical to horizontal. And now it's going to try and lay us out horizontally. And if it can't, it puts it down to the next row down. So that's the ideal for it but it starts putting things in the next row 
when it runs out of horizontal space. So that is a wrap panel, which is great for images and other things. Now let's go back to the stack panel for a minute. Also notice when I change my opening tag, it closes, my, it changes my closing tag as well, which that's a nice feature. So we have this and let's make it, let's make it vertical. We have a stack panel and that's kind of great, but it does clip the bottom. We don't want that. All right. So we want to see all of our pictures. We can't scroll here in any way. So the only way to see all the pictures is to actually expand it out. So let's instead, I'm going to temporarily cut this and instead put a scroll viewer. Now what I've done is I put a scroll viewer and then inside the scroll viewer, I put a stack panel. Now it's not showing up over here. Why is that? Well, because now scroll viewer has to be put on a grid. We specified grid dot row column and column span for stack panel, but it's no longer on the grid. It's inside scroll viewer. So we actually have to cut this out and paste it in here. And now scroll viewer is in this spot and stack panel doesn't really have a spot in the grid. It just lives inside scroll viewer. That's its parent. Now scroll viewer is one of those things that can only have one child element. You can't put multiple things inside a scroll viewer. You have to have a stack panel or something else inside of it. So let's start this up. Now I have a scroll bar where I can scroll through my images. But if I were to make this taller, let's make this tall enough. Notice the scroll bar is no longer enabled because it has nothing to scroll. And that works as well with the wrap panel. So there you go. There's the wrap panel. The only problem with this is that the wrap panel doesn't necessarily work the way you want it to because it's inside of this scroll viewer, which is why typically we don't put a wrap panel inside of a scroll viewer because it ends up being more like a stack panel. So that's stack panel, that's scroll viewer, that's wrap panel. So there's a few more controls you can use. Now let's look back at our combo box and note that we can have some fun with this. For example, instead of having this full name property, let's go back to first name. Let's take this out. Let's cut it. And instead we're going to put a stack panel orientation of horizontal. Put first name. I'll paste it a few more times, but instead of binding here, I'm going to put a space and then I will make this last name. So now we have a stack panel, which its orientation is horizontal. Now this is one of those things that kind of messes me up once in a while. Visually in XAML, it's arranged vertically, but since it says horizontal, it's laid out horizontally. It's just one of those things that messes me up once in a while. So just note that, that even though it's arranged vertically, if it's horizontal, it's horizontal. So just one of those things. So I have first name binding and a last name binding. Now, if we run this and look at our combo box, it still says Tim, Corey, Joe Smith, and Sue Storm. We could have even more fun of this by saying, well, what if I did an image with a source equal to my picture? And now if we do this drop down, it's massive, but notice Tim Corey, 
Joe Smith, and Sue Storm. Not quite what we had in mind. So let's do this. Height, we could do height, or we could do max height if we wanted to, but let's just do height. And let's say our height is, oh, I don't know, 20 pixels. And the same with the width. And now in our drop down, we have a little image of me next to all three people. We could even go further and have this image be bound to a property and have it changed based upon which person was selected. So there's some fun you can have with it. Combo boxes are a lot more powerful now because we can add all those new fun things, including having things like check boxes inside them and other things. In fact, we could even have a video playing next to each item, a different video playing next to each item. Do you want to have that? Probably not. But maybe you have, you know, top three videos. Which one do you which one do you like? And have instead of words, you could have just the videos playing. And they select which video they want to see in the comment box. So there's some fun things you can do there. But one thing I want to point out that you may have noticed, and I did point out a little bit down below, but there is no grid.column, grid.row, or column span or row span for any of these items here. And the reason why is because they're not on the grid directly. That's not their parent. It's their grandparent, but it's not their parent. Instead, these items here all live inside stack panel. Stack panel lives inside combo box. Well, technically data template, but inside combo box. Combo box is directly on the grid. Therefore, it has the grid.column span, grid.column, grid.row. So just know you don't have to add these elements. In fact, you shouldn't add these elements unless they're directly on the grid. Also note that you can stack these things. So a stack panel can have a stack panel inside of it. A grid can have a grid inside of it. So you can have a grid inside here and put multiple things in a, in a really weird and funky layout. And that's fine. So that might mean you could have, you know, big and bold, my name, and then down below a my title in a smaller font, you know, kind of like a signature. There's some really great things you can do if you just get a little creative with your layout and don't get locked into if WinForms did it this way, I have to do the same thing in WPF. Again, utilize the power of WPF by taking advantage of these extra features. If we're going to deal with the complexities that come with WPF, like this right here, they might as well get the benefits as well. If you're not getting the benefits, don't use WPF. Use WinForms. So that's a basic overview of the controls. We've got text block, text box, combo box or list box, buttons, scroll viewer, stack panel, and wrap panel, as well as image and media element. With those, you can do a ton of cool stuff. I would definitely recommend that you play around these, try them out, try different things, take an existing form you have in WinForms, and just try it out in WPF. Now, coming up, I'm going to have an add-on for my course, my C-Sharp application from start to finish course, where I take my existing completed application and say, okay, let's remove the WinForms UI and add in a WPF UI. And how is that going to look and how is it going to be different? So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you're not on the mailing list, definitely there's a link down below. Definitely jump on the mailing list so you can be alerted when that comes out. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe. I would definitely appreciate it if you'd also hit the like button if you like this video and want to see more like it. Also, let me know what you want to see more of, all right, or what you struggle with. All right, thank you. As always, I am Tim Corey.